Good evening, and I love you. I'm Heather Peterson Lockhart, and I am the Chiefess. Welcome to the Chiefess chat. I have no idea why I am so nervous this evening. <laughs> I uh, I have some some interesting nerves going this evening, and some technical connectivity issues going. So here we are. Here I am. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to take a second. And as we always do in the beginning, connect to ourselves and to a source greater than we and to our surroundings. And so um, I will wait a second while a couple of you gather. And then um, I brought something fun today. So remember uh, last time I had you guys stand and reach and put up your arms and um move your bodies around a little bit, right? Well, today I brought something fun. Are you so ready? Are you ready? There is a reason. Wait till you see what I have. Oops, I can't trip on my chair. Nor hit my head at the same time, but I don't have a crown on this time, so it should be a little easier. I brought my hula hoop. Now, I can't hula hoop. I did pretty good that time, didn't I? That was pretty decent. Check me out. I'm knocking things over, though. Okay, if you have a hula hoop, get it out at home. If you don't, get up. Wiggle your hips, move your body around. Now, I know you're like, why does she start these things all wacky like this? But there's a reason, there's a method to my madness. I've told you guys that the body is electric, right? So when you move around and you, ooh, I had it, I had a rhythm there. If, soccer player. When you move your body around, your systems start talking. Electronic impulses start firing. I know that sounds crazy, but it's the truth. And you're more conductive you're more connective and so more systems are communicating I had it I gotta move my chair I'm gonna get it I think there must be a hula hoopa in the audience anyway I don't want to hit my bowl there there we go so I watched these things back the other day and it doesn't show you when it pauses out on me like that so then I look like I just lunch out in the middle of one of these videos. Like I just like all of a sudden check out. But really, did you guys see that? Like where it just stops for a second? Because there's no connectivity. Okay, so anyway, if you and your colleagues were to start your business meetings like this, you would have better ideas. If y'all rolled into the conference room with your hula hoops and you put your stuff down, you set your devices down, you set up all your laptops, you set down all your, your attache cases, yes. And then you got out your hula hoops and you started warming up like this, maybe doing some jumping jacks. The ideas would flow. The connectivity and conductivity would increase. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. Um, I'm not nervous anymore. No joke. No joke. I get really worked up before I get on here sometimes. Like I have to go to the bathroom 27 times in three seconds. Well, it's really like 30 seconds. It's really like whatever. Anyway, you get the picture. But, so, move around, move your body, everybody, especially if you've been sitting on your butt all day, we have crazy weather here in Georgia. So, you're gonna get this message and feel a little better if you just get up. So get up and move around, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And, I had it there, I'm getting pretty good. And you'll feel better, so. Get up, move around. I need my chair back now. Look at that. I even need a sip of water. Ha 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 ha. Because I make myself cough. How's everybody doing? Thank you for joining me. I love you, Lisa. I love you, Christopher. Hello, Mark. I love you. Hello, Miss Nancy. I love you. Hello, Miss Kathy. I love you. John Flores. Are you Diesel? Sir Rios. How you living? I need to see your face. Um, I love you all. How's everybody doing hanging out at home? Hey, Paul. I love you. I love you, Christopher. I love you, Mike. I love all of you. How's everybody doing chilling out at home? Are you getting outside? Are you taking part in nature? All right, let's take a second. Let's breathe and pause. I brought my bowl. All right, and then um, and then I'm gonna tell you a story, and that's why I'm nervous because I'm gonna tell you a really, really 
I'm gonna get really personal like I used to share. Some of you have been on my social media for a long time. I used to break it down, didn't I? I used to get like really, I used to share really, really vulnerably, really honestly. And then like, I pulled myself back and did some deeper learning, you know, like on the inner layers, sort of by myself. And so, whoo, now I'm ready to start sharing some. And um, frozen yoga on the deck. Go, girl. I love it. Yes. I'm so happy you're here, Miss Shruti. Working out every day and committed to school today. Amen. Yes, I used to share Extremely Real. And then I tucked it away for a little bit, and I'm going to bring it tonight. And I think that's what I'm nervous about. Oh, because, um, well, I'm just ready to authentically be me. And truth be told, I still overwhelm myself. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Whoop, there it is. There we go, right? So this is a Tibetan singing bowl. It is toned in the love, um, the love frequency, the heart chakra. So I'm going to play this for a second. I invite you to close your eyes with me and if you will, if you are right-handed, take your left hand and put it on your heart, preferably on your skin where you can feel it. If you're right, if you're left-handed, do the opposite. And then place your dominant hand on top. So your less dominant hand can feel your heartbeat. I don't know if you can. I can't feel my heartbeat through my chest. I have to feel it through my neck. So that is actually the way I do it. But get connected to that beautiful pulse that beautiful heart that's pumping life force energy blood through your body and let's close our eyes take three cleansing breaths and we gonna feel like fabulous all right ready so in through the nose and out through the mouth in through the nose feel like all the little cells within me get shaken back into their spot in a nice way so that I feel like I took a few great big breaths of fresh air right <clears throat> so whoo all right um I <clears throat> I always think and sit in meditation um, quite a long time when I choose what I'm going to talk about for these things or you know anything where I uh, unless it's a if I speak before people unless it's something that they ask me on a specific con you know um, topic then I try to pay attention to what life experiences are happening in my life at that time uh, are several people asking me the same question am I experiencing uh, a like situation in more places than one what's on the table for me you know <clears throat> What be the learning? And um, so there was a there was a message this week that just it, it really really touched me. Um, a young woman wrote to me and said that uh, um, <clears throat> she said that when she was in elementary school she had a hard time liking herself and loving on herself and so. Uh, she was picked on and she was bullied by other children and that my girls had stuck up for her and she was grateful for that. Um, I have twins that are 22, those of you who don't know. And, um, and she was thankful for the time that she had been able to be around me and that we had had exchanges and that we had uh, talked and spent time together and when, when they had to change ways after elementary school she was sorry to see them go, but she was just as sorry to see me go. And um, it blew my mind. I mean, the message in itself about, about my girls, you know, um, just fills my heart with joy, to say the least. Fills my heart with love. But <clears throat> to hear that I made such an impact on a young woman where I remember 
consciously feeling like I should um, downplay my real self, you know, and pull back the reins. And that I, I remember feeling like I was just consummately, I mean, just always too much and, um, or, or, or never enough, you know what I mean? It was one or the other. I was too much or not enough. And, um, <clears throat> and so, uh, that really touched me. And, and she said that now, um, she is inspired to listen to what I have to say and to read what I have to write. And it moved me tremendously because, um, I, I do know who I am today. I, I have a pretty good understanding of what I'm here to do. <clears throat> At least from my limited perspective now, which will hopefully continue to grow. And, um, and, um, but I, I didn't at all, I, I, well, maybe I knew who I was then, but I wasn't accepting and allowing myself at all, you know? I, I felt so very alien um, in the normal way of doing things. And I, I, I just felt like, you know, like I said, I was either too much or not enough. And it, it just it was never just right, you know? So uh, her message inspired me tremendously. And it inspired me to share a bit about... Um, myself and some of the work I've done to get where I am today <clears throat> to be able to enjoy who I am and to enjoy my life and um, I mean to, to truly live a life like filled with joy I, I really do like I, I love my life <laughs> and um, it's mind-blowing to me to be in the position I'm in today and from where I come from, you know what I mean? Not like the way I was raised. I don't mean that I was raised well. I mean from what I came from, from the behavior I chose to adopt. Alcoholism, you know, addiction, <laughs> community liability, you know? Um, so, <clears throat> I also have several people. Oh, I meant to look at the title. I have several people that... Um, uh, have sent me, that send me, you know, y'all send me a bunch of questions, lots of questions, lots of videos, lots of this. Do you think this? Is this true? What do you share about this? What do you think about this? Right? And so, again, I, you know, I, I respond to as many as I can and I, and I read everything that I can. And so I try to see, like, how many are ask, asking the same questions or how many are sharing in the same experience. You know, do I have experience here that I can share that would be, do I have share, experience that I can share? If I don't, I don't. If I do, I do. And so... <clears throat> There's a video, I guess, I guess the video just came out recently, I'm not sure. Um, but there's a, a video that's circulating right now that's, you know, I suppose an expose on some of the things that are coming to light. Um, well, so, they're, I suppose, coming to light today in this video, but they're coming to light to me because these things have been known for quite a while. So... What I'm trying to say is, each of us, let me think where to start here. There's information being presented right now, coming to light, um, in, 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 a, in, in a variety of categories, right? In a variety of ways that um, we will all meet and greet different ways. And depending on our personal safety, our personal comfort, and our ability to greet new information and to process new information, we will be affected or unaffected differently, right? And so some people are watching these videos and learning these things for the first time and they're greatly affected. And, um, and that's all they can focus on. And so they're asking me questions about, you know, do I think this is true in this video? Do I think what this going on is true? And blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm not saying, I'm not going to say specific things because... Y'all, that's a rabbit hole. The the list of shit we could go on about that's going on on Earth. <laughs> we have days. We could talk for days, and I wouldn't take a breath. You know, we could we could speed load coffee, and we would just be like blah, 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 going through it, and we probably wouldn't get through it. So that you know, that's that's not the way to do it. And, and not to mention, um, <clears throat> everyone learns. I I I learn now, fortunately, 
God had to pound me a few times. We all learn at different rates and we're all ready to process things. You know, we have, uh, I forget who first said to me, but like, you know, spirit reveals things to us at the time when we're ready, you know, never gives us more than we can handle and things come in divine timing. So there's no like, you know, all of us are going to learn the same things in the same way or even agree on the same things, uh, you know. Um, the way I understand is each of us souls is different and unique and we each have our own soul learning to do and our own soul growing to do uh, individually and then we can contribute to the collective. But um, but each of us is unique in our process and each of us has different um, gifts that can be utilized for the collective. And I choose to say those things versus gift, uh, versus um, mission and jobs. Like, you know, you have a mission. I did start out there. I wanted to know my soul mission. Why, why am I here? What do I want to do? What am I, what's my job? What's my, you know? But I see things in life as a mission now. I, I, the, 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 mission is, the mission is to learn that there's no mission and that it's a gift to get to live here and that all living is learning even when it hurts but you know that kind of that 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 thinking didn't come except after lots of hurt <laughs> lots of living right so today that's how i see things so um we're all learning at different rates we're all we're not gonna we're not you know um each soul is at a different stage in personal evolution so we can't all learn at the same rates and we're, it's not like that's not what we're here for you know um i i remember when i was learning about you know social dynamics and i was studying like ancient tribes and civilizations and i taking it back to very 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 basic energetic exchanges you know you've got to have the broadcaster that stands up there and gives the message and then you what good would the broadcaster be without the receivers to say Oh, okay, I got the message. Let me carry the message. Thank you. And then they busy about carrying the message. You know, it's not that the broadcaster is any more important than the receivers. You know, the broadcaster is useless without the receivers. Without the re the broadcaster, the, the receivers just sit there like, uh, is anybody going to give us the message? We're just going to sit here, right? So no one job is any more important than the other. No one soul's evolution is, any, is paramount to, to anyone else's. No one's an underdog or an overdog. Now, some of us, we're all at different levels, and each one is unique. Each is unique. But no one's any more important than anybody else, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, quite a few years ago, um, I began a learning process. Um... I started learning about all kinds of things. Uh, one of the first, well, first of all, what first happened, I, I cause I've tried to think, I tried to think like, you know, how do I articulate this? When, when did this start and, and how did it start for me? And I'm just going to share my personal experience tonight. Okay. I'm going to share my personal experience, even though I'm not super comfortable doing it. Honestly, this usually I am, usually I am, but I, I'm not really super comfortable here because it's different uh, it's foreign <laughs> and yeah it just is you know but there I, at the same time there's so many people that are so uncomfortable right now and <clears throat> and I'm not anymore I'm not I'm quite comfortable so I got something that some others don't so I'll share <laughs> So, um, I, I started to basically just see things in front of my face differently is what I remember first. Just like I started seeing things differently, processing differently, like, well, that's not the way I see it anymore, or that's not really the way it is type deal about really fundamental, simple things that I learned, you know, like some of the most fundamental ways that I was taught. And I had, you know, rejected some of those when I was younger too, but, but some that all of a sudden it was just like a, I mean, God, this, I hate to use this phrase because it's so cliche and it's so, it's so worked over in the spiritual community, but it was like a veil had been lifted, you know, um, <laughs> contrary reaction to what is uncomfortable, sister, to get comfortable. Thank you. 
Thank you for that. <laughs> Side note, and if I forget where I was, then direct me back because I'm going to ask one of you to remind me. But um, when I began my conscious work and in, in, in like really like really trying to evolve and really trying to work through things of difficulty, I, I would do things like go to the beach each year and plow myself into huge <clears throat> towering waves that scared the shit out of me because they scared the shit out of me. And I would just like plunge in, you know, instead of just trying to like, you know, sashay my way in. I was, I would, I was just learning how to just like face things that make me afraid. And, and so here I be. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, so let's see here. Um, I, I, it, it was just like a, a veil had been lifted. Um, I started to understand things differently I started to see my capabilities I mean just like really fundamental on a really fundamental level that uh you know I just didn't see some like I was like that's not what humans are or this this is what it is I can't tell if that's things watching me when it's trying to connect or if it pauses out or not so I might just be sitting here like this when it does that but anyway um <clears throat> did you guys just have a pause in your screen did it just pause for you all like it pauses for me and then it says like can't connect or something like that but I don't know if it pauses for you so I might, it might just look like I stop and I'm like <laughs> out of nowhere right so um, I started to question things that I it does pause okay thank you thank you um, it, I started to question things that um, I had learned prior and it um, they just it, things didn't make sense anymore and it was a terribly uncomfortable place to be because at this point especially in my sobriety I was learning to base a lot of my faith on my experience right you know when you first start that stuff and you have no experience it's really scary but you tell other people tell you to trust it and then you do it a few times and you're like oh okay this works life works when you show up right so now just some of the things I think I can't, I'm trying to think of examples so I can give you just like fundamentals on people just and, and life just didn't apply anymore. <clears throat> and so it like, uh, made need for investigation, I suppose, right? Like I started looking into things, but not actually, this wasn't even at first. It was more unsettling just because things didn't make sense. Things didn't make sense around me. Um, about what I had learned about the world and my own personal experiences and perceptions of the world. That's it. That's what I'm trying to say. My education, that's what I'm trying to say. My education no longer aligned with my personal experiences in life. And it caused a disruption because I was like, wait a second here. This doesn't line up at all, right? And uh, about the same time... Um, uh, there was major shifts in my life. I was newly separated. Um, uh, sh right around that, that time, um, I don't know how to put this, like a, um, I mean, again, so cliche, but like the opportunity to heal my inner child presented where I just, um, kind of out of nowhere felt little. Like, literally, this is the stuff I don't like to share, but here you have it. Um, cause some, this happens to some people and they think they're kirking out and they're like a spiritual crisis. And it, and, and the thing is spiritual healing is spiritual crisis a whole lot of the time, at least in my experience, spiritual crisis can lead to spiritual healing. Um, cause that's, that's what it is. It's a break. The crisis is a break in the way things were, you know, the way things that you had accepted, I had accepted it was this way. And then that's not working anymore. It's not working anymore. And that's what was happening in my life. In order for me to like move to the next level, I needed to heal parts of myself. And, um, and, uh, Madhaba Mustafa. And, um, I, no, you're Kefalek. Kefak, Kefalek. You're from Egypt. Yes? Kefalek. Um, so, it was kind of like healing was knocking at my door. And I could open the door and let her in, <laughs> let that bitch in, or I could dodge it. But 
I really felt I like you know on some intuitive level I knew it was like you know it was not it was like you, you're gonna do the work or it's not it's just not gonna be good for you it's not gonna be good for you because you're not gonna be happy you're not gonna be able to move on you're gonna stay stuck here and I was at a really pivotal point in my life where like I said I was seeing things differently and my belief systems were shifting now I did not know that at the time but mwah, to you Seth um, I did not know that at the time, but my belief systems were shifting. I see this in retrospect, right? So, and, and, and that feels like crisis because if I don't, it, it, it things used to be this way and I'm a Capricorn y'all. So like, they're like, they're not only this way, they're like Dish, right angled, solid, sturdy. <laughs> we're like cement posted in this way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm a, I'm like I'm hardcore Capricorn. I'm a, I'm a hardcore chicken that way. So this was a complete and total meltdown of who I was. And it, it was the most uncomfortable thing ever. And then for years to tell the story publicly because I was like, they, they might lock me up and commit me if I, if I tell it too close to when it happened. So I felt little to the degree that I had to tell my girls. I had to tell my kids because I didn't really know what was going on with me. I did, I was working through this with, um, I had a, a mentor who had experienced similar things and had worked with others and he also, um, he did work with people in spiritual crisis at the Mayo Clinic. So I was in good hands, but that didn't make me feel any more comfortable and it didn't make me any more able to articulate what I was going through, right? Because I didn't know, man, I just felt small some of the time and, and unable to deal with life. And I remember during that time, like I had to say to my girls at one point, like, I feel little. I just feel little. And I remember my daughter Sidona was such a doll. She's like, that's okay, mommy. It's okay. You know, she was so loving and compassionate in receiving me. And so, I mean, don't get me wrong, y'all. I still maintain my home and cook dinner and everything. But like, just the way I behaved for a little bit, like, I would just say things and just like, act in a way that was not like my character. And, um, and I and I was I was really uncomfortable. I was terribly uncomfortable. And I remember one time I didn't want to leave my house. I felt so little and I just felt so vulnerable and so scared. I didn't want to leave the house. And I remember that the kids, the girls needed something from Walmart. It was like 6.30 at night. Must have been winter because it was already dark. I mean, I remember what I was wearing. I remember that it was <clears throat> in the... Um, in the evening and it was like one of those nights where like to me winter kind of hangs heavy you can feel winter you know like it's dark early I like to stay in the house I'm not trying to be out so there's already all of that like feeling I can feel the energy of it but then I was like I felt little and I didn't want to go and by the way the only thing I was really comfortable with at this point was like playing outside with my son my son was small it was beautiful and so I got to you know I played with him anyway from the time he was born but I got to like really play you know and so, um, so we had to go to the store and I didn't want to go. I was just like gridlocked. I mean, I literally was like paralyzed with fear. I felt little, I felt too fragile to go to the store. And I remember standing in front of the mirror and I was diesel at this point. Like I, that was, man, I was pushing 160 pounds. It wasn't the biggest I got. I was pushing 160 pounds at five and a half, six percent body fat as a drug-free woman. I was jacked. I was a big girl. I'm totally safe to go to the store, you know? And I had to talk myself through that. I had to, like, look at myself in the mirror, and I was like, Heather, you're huge. You can go to the store. Act like you're big. Puff yourself up. Go to the store, and you can be little when you go home. And I had to, like, talk myself through this, just like this. And so... You know, we go to the store, and, and the thing is, nobody around me knows what's going on. I'm not articulating this to everyone, you know. So, um, we go to the store, and, and, you know, all is fine. But I just remember, I remember that, like, this time, this opportunity to heal presented in such a, let me say, audacious and loud and life-altering way that, like, I mean, I feel like, the shit like took me off my feet and like I had to pay attention like like some part of me was like you have to you have to hold yourself here like you have to be compassionate with yourself here like you can't you can't just breeze over this again this time and you can't just ignore this and you can't just march your way through this and you can't build your way through this you're not gonna be able to lift yourself through this Heather you know you're gonna have to like 
You're going to have to pay attention. You're going to have to show up for you. And I did. I did. I, 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 that's when I probably began conscious energetic healing um, of myself. And I, I engaged in, um, that's when I started um, consciously healing past soul fragments of my soul, of hurts from my past. Um, this is when I started learning about the correlations between emotional hurt, energetic hurt, and organ issues, and systems in the body being affected by all of the above. And I began working on my own body, and I began uh, my own personal healing um, at that time of my right ovary. And um, I, yeah, so I started on that. That was my first experience with, with that. Um, about the same time, um, let's see here. About the same time, I'm trying to think of just some, uh, about the same preschool, right? And so I remember that, <laughs> this is a funny story. I remember that uh, this is a totally inappropriate, too much for too much information story, but it gets the point across. And this was like, well, this is just how it went. So here you go. <laughs> Classic. So um, he was having an issue. And I remember we had talked through it. We had prayed and everything. And then I wanted to give him some token of like peace to take with him the next day. So he had gone to bed and I had taken a quarter and like wrapped it in this bright orange tape and drew some stuff on it. And I had made him like his own coin, like his own like good luck coin, you know. And um, and so I took it up with me at night. And this was like, like I said, this is this is when I was I was pretty actively bodybuilding. I still took quite a few quite a few supplements at the time. And so I had a cup full of supplements, and then I had the quarter. And then um, in the morning, I would take like I could take I don't know how many pills, like those big fat aminos. And, you know, I could take 10, 15 pills in one handful and just open my throat with a big thing of water and just, like, pop it all down, right? So I got up in the morning, and I did that. And as soon as I did it, I was like, oh, my God. And I remembered that the quarter was in there. And so I called a woman who was a, um, a, a I was going to say, I, she's a student teacher of mine. She was a client. I call all my clients student teachers because we're all students and we're all teachers in each exchange. So, um, she was a surgeon and I was like, Hey, sweet mama. How are you? Beautiful Amy. Mwah. Um, I, I called her and I was like, don't ask. I just, I swallowed a quarter. What do I do? And she's like, uh, she goes, um, hello. I love you. She goes, uh, she's like, well, you're going to have to watch your poop because if you, if you, um, if, if you swallowed a quarter, you're going to have to make sure it comes out of you or it could bind up in your intestines and get all twisted up in there. And I was like, you're shitting me, you know, like, she's like, no, but you need to. <laughs> so I was like, all right. It just was like, it just was just overload for me. I was like, you know what? I just am not even going to deal with this. So by this point I had started, um, very much practicing, um, meditation and I was in the energetic healing. I was very conscious of my body. I was extremely in tune with my own body. So I decided that I was going to meditate the quarter out of my body. And that was that. So I remember I told my girls, I was like, I'm going to meditate the quarter out of my body. And at this point, they're kind of like, okay, mom, whatever. You know, because I, I had, uh, I know I was saying wacky stuff at this point. Like, it wasn't wacky. It was the truth. But when you've never talked about this kind of stuff, practiced this type of way, acted this type of way or been exposed to it. It was all sorts of wacky, you know? And, um, so I forget, I think it was like, I can't remember how much time went by, but anyway, I knew exactly when the quarter was coming. I knew where it was in my body. I monitored its way through. And then I remember telling my girls one afternoon that I was going to go get the quarter. And they're again, like, okay, mom, you know, whatever. So I got saran wrap. You have to get saran wrap and cover the, the toilet, you know, and you have to poop and go through the poop. So I said, like, what a story, right? So I did, and I found the quarter. I mean, it was like the one time I did it, you know? And um, this, I, I don't care, it totally gross. Fish the quarter out, clean the quarter off, too, because I wanted to see what happened to the quarter. I was just, like, mind blown, mind blown by the whole thing, right? That I had really, 
done what I said I was gonna do and that like literally the quarter came out when I said it was gonna come out and then like I it was right on the money <laughs> ah, that's a fabulous joke <laughs> oh my god that's funny <laughs> so um I was I was like oh you know it's just a trip and like the kids are just like mom you're you're a trip you know so at this point what I start to see happening in front of my face is surreal and I start to be able to work with others. I'm given the opportunity to work with others at this point. Um, I don't really know how that started either. People just, like, like one, one time, um, went, you and the dad jokes. One time this lady, um, she just reached out to me and uh, asked my assistance with uh, a child that had an injury. And, um and we started our work and and it was just out of nowhere so so I didn't go looking for others is what I'm trying to say it just it's kind of happened and so so then I'm in this process right I'm in this process where what I'm seeing happen in front of my face is contradictory to what I've learned at this point um, just the way that my body is working the things I'm learning and all these things are just like like it's not adding up and it's beautiful what I'm experiencing is beautiful but I'm frightened because uh, I don't know how to share it I don't know how to talk about it and I don't know um, I have a little clock here it says 111 right now that's funny um, I, I, I'm, I'm too much I'm too much for me that's what it is I'm too much for me at that point so then I just am like, you know, overwhelmed, right? And so, um, I asked Spirit for comfort and my relationship with the planet changes. And it is beyond what I can put into words. Um, I start to be able to interact with nature in a different way than I ever have. Well, I say than I ever have before. I've always been good with animals. I've always been good with kids. I just didn't realize, like, that that it's a... I began, I became, now as I say this, I learned too, you know, as I share with y'all. Um, I became more conscious of my ability to interact with other living creatures. I had always been interacting this way. I had always been this way but I did not uh, know so once I began to be able to know and notice I went into like little science mode in fact I spent um, I'd say I spent eight years in this mode this last eight years just coming out of it this year where I was in heavy learning mode and so um, when I when I became aware of a process then I wanted to study it and, and then, so then, so once I learned that this is the way I interact and that this is how I work and that this is what I can do, then I want to know how I do it. I want to know how to hone it and I want to know how to do it again better, right? I want to, I want to play with it. So I start, I start working in this way. Now in this, at the same time, I go through a, what I joke and call uh, a universal night school. Um, other people use the term downloads. Those are their terms. I dig that. I get down with that. It works for me, I suppose. Um, but I had a few, uh, I had my first about that point, um, like a series of learning is all I would call it. I don't really know how to describe it. It was a, it was a period of a few hours where I went into a, um, a state a meditative state and I learned I just learned and I learned things that were way past my um, understanding past my comprehension and mm, I don't even know I don't even know like just uh, I learned some stuff about what was going on in this world that I just didn't think could be real and excuse me was more than I could swallow as I burp and uh so at that point I thought I'd gone cuckoo <laughs>
for real. At that point, I thought I had lost my marbles. But I was still taking care of my family, running my business, cooking dinner every night, and coaching clients, right? Mm. And then God would put what I called boots on the ground in my life. And I would happen to run into a person who would tell me some story or something. And it would be something that corroborated a part of my learning that I had been unable to swallow. So I started to realize that uh, at first it, I thought it would have been easier to have gone cuckoo. Because if what I had learned was not true, if I had lost my unable to maintain my life, then, then I would for sure know I'd gone cuckoo and then there would be a chance that that shit wasn't real. But that's not what happened. Um, I actually got uh, quite a few aspects of my learning, let's just call it, confirmed. And um, again, this is where in the beginning I was saying there's no sense to me in this point in discussing every issue and listing everything. And I'll tell you why by the time we close this chat tonight. Because I am the solution. And we're going to stay in the solution, end in the solution. So I do all this learning that is just too much for me. And at that point, I reach out to people. I try to, I, I write a bunch of stuff down. And I reach out to some shamans and some elders in some communities who are respected and guided and wise. And the general consensus is, like one man says to me, you have learned more than I have been given, and I would be careful who you talk to, right? And I'm like, that's fabulous. <laughs> so I really don't know what to do with myself. I feel like I'm lacking teachers. I'm lacking comfort. I'm lacking clarity. Um, I, at somewhere around that point, I get to speak with a woman um, who's a shaman and she, she gives me beautiful, beautiful advice and she's like, I don't really know, you know, what to, to tell you, uh, but I would, I should, I would ask that you distill, she's like, distill the information and it was, it was wonderful, you know, just like, let it settle and let it all settle and see what you come up with. So, so I learned this and this is when, um, like, this is when, um, hawks start coming and landing on my fence and um like you know they come within a few feet of me um they come within over our heads uh often a lot of them i had many birds of prey above my head several times um when it would first happen i thought it was beautiful but it was weird because i didn't know what to make of it and my son thought it was really cool because he was little, but my girls were tripped out about it because it was weird. You know, see big birds of prey coming that close and just approaching you. Um, so it was just, you know, it was a surreal time in life. And at the same time, it was the most comforting thing to see like this beautiful planet filled with life and to have the opportunity to interact with it in a different way, filled with compassion and no judgment and true and utter acceptance and just to feel the immense love that comes from this planet and her creatures. I know that sound, might sound so nutty to some of you, but it's constant and it's powerful to me. And it was more reliable than the humans around me were, I felt like. Um, because, you know, I, I did try to talk to some people and some people I just freaked them out, you know, they just freaked out. and so. At that point, I had to learn that, like, we're not all on the same path. You know, not everything is for everyone. And I needed to, I needed to, to I needed to do some more work. You know, it's kind of like taking one class, right? And then just deciding that, you know, you know everything and you're going to go tell everybody. So, I had some more learning sessions like that. <laughs> I went to night school with the universe. And, um... And so at that point, I was like, uh, you know, I, I was kind of mad. I Honestly, I was mad. Let's be real. I said I would. I was mad at God. I was mad at God. Because I was like, 
this is what what the what like what's up with this and what what's the point in t teaching me anything and showing me anything when like what am I supposed to do with it and then that's what I learned for me for me personally I was shown a problem to work on a solution and for me personally like I said for each of us it's different for me personally my solution is to do the healing on myself that enables me to be a whole human being and then to be audaciously beautifully loud about it and to broadcast so loudly that I can show others how to do the same thing and that's my 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 personal part now for some for someone who has a lifelong soul wound of lack of, of of being not enough or too much you know wounded in the soul department I'm, I'm sorry in the self-worth department um that's a high order that's a really high order to be asked to do that right I could be better at supporting someone else but for me to grow into me to love me to be able to bring all of me well that's a whole whole lot a whole lot and so I had no idea how I was going to be able to do that um, at this point my freaking problem-solving skills were smashing the shit out of things lifting heavy weights or avoiding like pretending it didn't exist I mean I was sober um, I was you know on my path to evolution but I still like I was thinking about this when I hurt back then I would go lift heavy ass weights like I, I wasn't you know I was facing things but I um I didn't feel like I had the tools. I didn't feel like I had the tools to show up to be able to handle any of this stuff. Continue to stay in the game, maintain my family, take care of myself, grow, evolve, and like, I just don't know, you know? So, and I had no, I didn't know how to do, get any help on it either. Like, how are you supposed to talk to people about stuff where you feel crazy and... You know, you feel like what you're seeing in front of your face is not lining up with what's going on inside. And and yet, <laughs> you know what I mean? I just felt like I was lacking the tools. And so, um, at that point, uh, that's when I really started studying energy. I started studying energy and I started studying waves, binary code, energy, electromagnetism, gravity, the physics on planet Earth, I mean, the laws of nature, the basics. And I started studying them because I was like, how do I be the solution? Like, how do I be it? I asked spirit, what do I need as a human being to thrive on planet Earth? Show me through my experience. Show me through my living. What do I need, you know, to evolve my own biology my own ways of being so that I am the solution because at that point I understood from my program of recovery from my studying of simple law of attraction physics you know from I mean look back in history do a quick study on history stepping into resistance is never the answer right so the minute I decide that there's a power over me doing, you know, doing me wrong or that I'm a victim in a society or the whatever, 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 you know, then I'm part of the problem and I'm no longer standing in the solution. So I really wanted to, to learn how to actively participate in my own evolution, in the solution, to be part, you know, of doing the next right thing on a daily basis and yet I had no idea where to start I had no tools and I was scared shitless so I was like all right I'm really good at reinventing myself I've always been really good at that in fact one of my daughters said she's like mom you are the queen of death and rebirth and I was like really 
And she's like, are you kidding me, Mom? More than anyone I know. And I had never thought about that. But, you know, sometimes people say those little nuggets that stick out, right? And you should pay attention to when they stick out because there's lessons in that. Those things that are playing again, learn from it, right? So I was like, how do I use what I have? And how do I make myself the solution when I don't know what to do? So I decided to play grown-up dress-up and to decide to be someone, to, to create a character, to create a character who had all the things that I didn't have. To create a character who could show up in the solution knowing how to stay in the solution, knowing how to not need to squash things, how to be able to sit at a table and solve things amicably, to not have to set everything on fire, but the highest outcome for all those at the table and to be able to connect and communicate effectively for a compassionate, growth-filled outcome for all involved. I know, right? Well, let me tell you, I didn't think I was capable. So cr I created a character called the Chiefess. And let me tell you, she was something. This woman could show up and act like a grown-up regardless of what was going on because she was so strong, so safe, so grounded, so connected to source that you, like, couldn't shake her. Like, she didn't need to get defensive. She didn't need to step into reactive behavior. She chose her actions because she's done the work, right? And I wanted... I decided, I remember, this is how I said it. In fact, that's why it makes me, that's why it moves me. I remember that this is what I thought. I remember that at that point in my life with the things that I was going through, that, um, I love you. Um, I remember thinking, when I check out in this form, and I get to roll back the tape. <laughs> you youngins don't know what that is when we say tape things, right? My son's like, you taped people? And I'm like, ha! it means recorded. <laughs> so I get to roll back the, the tape and I get to watch the scenes of my life. Like, I want to see this woman show up. I want to see this woman who, who shows up with grace, with compassion, with dignity, with with freaking female strength like many of us have not seen right not this damaged shit i wanted her to be the one that when i played it back started to pop up more often than not started to be the one that came to the big crisis situations and started to handle business i wanted to see that behavior go from like boop Boop, or you guys are this way. Boop, boop, as it played to then, you know, as it, as the thing, as the tape went on, she's steady and that behavior balances and that's who I want to be, right? So I created a character and very systematically to come into the village of Heather and to help me learn how to be a human being how to show up for myself, how to show up for my family, how to become a contributing member of my community, and how to create calm and balance to the point where I can radiate it and give it to others if they want. I can help them cultivate their own is the truth. I can't give you anything you don't have. And it's remarkable because I... I, I broke it down, you know, I, again, I didn't realize this is what I was doing when I started it. I just, my ass was on fire and I needed a freaking solution. So I was like, honestly, I was like, yo, grown up dress up. You know why? You can't fuck up dress up. No little kid ever shows up and was like, well, my cape doesn't match my boots. And therefore, I'm just not, I'm not epic. No. They show up and they're like, do you see my boots? Do you see my cape? I can fly. And, and we're supposed to be like, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Right? And I needed that permission 
I needed that freedom to become who I wanted to be without the typecast limitations that I had set on Heather. Because Heather is either what? Say it like a course now. She's either too much or too little, right? So how was I going to give Heather the freedom to be who she wanted to be, who she wants to evolve into? Like, how was I going to do that for myself? So through a very systematic process, I started to play grown-up dress-up each and every day and create this character called the Chiefess. And she came in chapters. She came in many characters, which we'll discuss in another video. But I worked this process, and lo and behold, one day I, be, I realized what I'm doing. And I realized that I am putting myself back together again, right? Bit by bit, piece by piece, you know? All these pieces of the puzzle of Heather that I have ostracized and taken out and left here and hung up there, right? I'm pulling them back in and they're, they're integrating and I'm allowing all the parts of Heather to come back together. And it's beautiful and it's not easy, but they're coming, right? So as I realize what I'm doing, I start to break down the process and then I start to work it with others. And um, I have since created a process that we call creating the character that um, I have now worked with hundreds of people all around the world to help them in their personal evolution and creating the life that they desire. So um, it's just funny. I was talking about doing, uh, when, I, when I talked about starting my book, I was saying in front of I mean, my son one time something about... Um, how I became the chiefess, and he said, well, what do you mean? You are the chiefess." And I, I, I thought, <laughs> that's so funny. You know, my child who has never seen me under the influence. When I meet some people now, sometimes, you know, in conversation, and, I, and I'm very open about the fact that I say, you know, I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic, and they're, and I, or I'll tell a story, and they're just like floored. They, they just can't imagine me behaving that way. And yet I can totally, I don't know. It seems like a different person at this point, but I mean, it's still me, you know what I mean? It's still my behavior. But my point about this is, I'm introducing this to you all today, and I'm sharing this story, because so many are going through tough times for a multitude of reasons right now. You're either stuck in your house, and you're meeting parts of yourself, some of your puzzle pieces are coming back to play. Now that you're in your home, you might have not done any work in your home. You might not have done work on your yard. You might not have been in cahoots with your family that's now all there. Or your home without a family, without a busy to-do list, meeting yourself, meeting your spare time, meeting the fact that you might not know what the fuck you do for fun. That was me. And that's scary. It's like running around with your pants down. <laughs> what do you do for fun, Heather? Well, I have three kids. I know, but what do you do for fun? Well, I... No, no, no. Not what you do. Who are you? Right? So, tons of us are meeting ourselves for the first time. Or we're meeting aspects of ourselves that we've never met before. And it's terribly frightening. Um, many people are learning about things that have been... Go that are going on on Earth right now. Um... By the way, for those of you that ask about that, I will touch on that real quick. It is my understanding that um, I have been saying this for quite some time. Those of you that follow me have been reading my writing. I have been saying that the world as we know it would shift in February to March of 2012 to, of 2020. I told you that the financial systems, the banking systems would shift and the world as we know it would change. Well, here we are. Um, didn't know why, of course. It's just studying astrology energetic changes, intuitively tuning in. That's what's up. It is my understanding that this is the beginning of a great shift that will happen from, we'll conclude, I call this part of the, the main, the main hall from, I'd say it's going to be intense from 2020 to 2022. And then we'll start the shift from 2022 to 2024, where systems will be restructuring and rebuilding. Um, but there's going to be a lot of illumination let's say and a lot of learning let's say you're learning things right now that you're having a hard time swallowing i am again introducing this concept of staying on board to heal yourself because it is a rabbit hole to go down um let me put it this way regardless of how much you learn you're never going to learn it all and there's never going to be enough to make it okay that's the key right there. That's the key answer that some of you have been asking me. Do I know this? Yes, I know it. Do I know that? Yes, I do. Do I know about this? I do. And 
But am I really informed about this? I am. Do I want to watch another video so I'm more informed? I do not. Thank you. Because guess what? I've learned now. I can be part of the problem or I can be part of the solution. These things have been happening on earth. Some of the shifts that are happening now, some of the things that are coming out right now have been happening. They've been talked about for a while. If you go dig, you're going to find out that some of us have been writing about them for a long time. Um, it's not the point. The point now is it's not that things are worse on earth. You know, some people think that things are worse on earth than ever before. Absolutely not. They're better than ever. Ever. And that is the gospel truth. They're better than ever because I'll give you an analogy I came up with the other day. This is my favorite. Let's say an old lady lives in a house and there's not a lot of wattage of electricity coming to that house. She gets a very, very small amount of wattage that comes to her house. She has a three bedroom itty bitty house in the woods. She's got a little bitty kitchen, a little bitty bedroom, and a little bitty bathroom. She tries to stream the light in there, but it's not enough light to stream through that whole little itty bitty place, okay? It's just not enough to make it the whole way through. So each day she goes through her daily maintenance and she cooks in her kitchen and she sleeps in her bedroom and she takes a bath in her bed in her bathroom and she goes through her daily stuff and you know it is what it is and it's good it's enough right and so she goes about her business and then she finds out that um, she's going to get the opportunity to uh, revamp her house and she is going to get more wattage coming to her house so she's going to go from like 40 watts to 100. I know that's not the wattage that comes to a house, but go with me here. She's going to go from 40 to 100. And so she is like, this is wild, right? So she gets the 100 watts in her house and oh my gosh, everything is lit up. She walks into the bathroom one day and she's like, dear God, there's a ring around the tub that is so dark. It looks like it could strangle her. And all of a sudden she's like, oh my God, oh my God. I've been bathing in that. Oh my God, I bet I'm sick. I bet it's all like, I bet it's horrible. I should probably go to the doctor right away. Oh my God, I should go to the doctor today. Let me ask you. She's been going about her life every day, bathing in that tub. It's been filthy for quite some time. Is she ill? She's been well, she's been fine. She's been fine until more light came into the house, exposing the degree of darkness in her tub. Do you understand? There's nothing on earth now that hasn't been here for quite some time. Except for more light and a supportive energy that yields for a higher outcome, more love, more compassion, and more connection for humanity and all living creatures on earth. It is time for better things to happen. It is time for some systems to upgrade, for humanity to recalibrate to a higher way of being and a higher way of living. So as these things are exposed, they look heinous and things may look horrible in nature. However, it's just that there's more light coming in exposing the dirty ring around the tub, which has always been there trying to strangle everything. So I am excited for these times on earth. I'm grateful to be here. I understand that those of us that are here right now are in a capacity that is, um, well, celebratory. My goodness, we get to be here to do great work on our souls. This energy is hospitable for doing work on ourselves and being part of a beautiful a beautifully shifting humanity that um gets to host better days you know better ways truly um so i think it's gorgeous so what i'm going to do is since um i'm going to host my create the character workshops on here so we're going to start different groups and we are going to do my create the character workshop starting in in may so we'll be meeting um each group will meet once a week and we will work together for about an hour and a half each week and i will take you through um exercises that in effect are 
um, energetic cleansing, energetic healing, soul fragment retrieval, and um, subconscious reprogramming and reprogramming override programs. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> that is the that's all the the mumbo jumbo for saying we're gonna we're gonna give you a little scrubbing energetically, emotionally. We're gonna give you a cleanup. So you get rid of some of the yucky thoughts and beliefs that you may be holding as restrictions and limitations for who you can be and what you're capable of. We're going we're gonna to retrofit that. We're going to get some of the junk on it that's come as you've grown up and learned these things that you, know, you can't do this at a certain age and, well, you're probably not capable of that and because mom had that, you're probably going to do this. We're going to clean some of that junk out of there and you're going to notice that you're shiny, shinier, and you have retrofitted beliefs that are a little more hospitable and beneficial and then we use that to create a character to help you step into new behavior so that you get to play grown-up dress-up now let me tell you playing grown-up dress-up with other grown-ups creating a character is one of the most fun things you have ever done in your entire life it truly is one of the most freeing beautiful things um, because it's 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 watching grown-ups play and we don't we get to we get to free ourselves when we create characters of yes it's totally you 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 shift your perception because you're not saying what you can't do because it's not really about you it's about the character you want it's about who you think would do the job well right so it becomes not about you at all. It becomes who, like, who would you go to, you know? Would you have a mentor that you would go ask these questions to? If you could have anybody in the world right now come help you with this, who would you have? So it takes the focus off of self, which takes the judgment off of self, which takes the limitation off of self. So we're going to start those workshops online. We'll meet together for an hour and a half each week. Uh, for four weeks, it'll be a total of a four-week workshop, and um, and we will be able to create the character. Um, there is a guided meditation and energetic healing involved. I said that already, I think. Um, so if you guys have uh, 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 more information, will come out. But I wanted to introduce this because um, it's just really a good time. It's really a good time to find something that is fun to focus on that actually helps you stay in the solution. Because y'all, that's the key. You know. Jesus said we got to be childlike to enter the kingdom of heaven. Beliefs that are beneficial for our being. Beliefs that are beneficial for our being. Children have beliefs that are beneficial for their being. Well, provided the child has a hospitable rearing. You know what I mean. Um, they don't see limitation first. You know, uh... They see what's possible. And since they know they're growing and they know they're changing, then they they don't they don't ever say what they can't do. They're just like, well, let's just figure it out, you know? But then as we get a little older, we study these restrictions and we study the neighbor around us that maybe got tired and, and got lazy in their own evolution. And then we're like, well, you know, if Patty can't have it, I probably can't have it either. And, well, it looked like it was really hard for Norm, so... And, and then... You know, we buy into these beliefs that limit who we are. Or if someone's like, you know, hey, I just think you're too much. I have been told I'm too much. More than once. Guess what? I am for some. But I'm just right for many, including me. Mwah. <laughs> That's what I have to say to that. <laughs> so, it depends on what beliefs we choose to buy into. You know, if I choose to buy into the belief that I'm too much, well, I'm probably going to be too much. And I'm probably never going to amount to all that I could because I'll be too busy being too much. So when we create a character, we create a character that is hospitable for our growth, that gets to hold our hand. And we do this in a group that's supportive, that um, where we get to be safe and we get to have a uh, place of like-minded goodness. Um, it allows us to flip the script and to stay in the solution. And that's been the way I've gotten through life and stayed in the solution for the last... I started doing this 13, 7... Yeah, 8 years ago. I started doing this 8 years ago. Um, 
Well, I guess I've been doing it my entire life, but I, like I said, I didn't realize it. I was always like, I've always been wanting to dress up and be the best version of me. You guys have seen me online. One day you wake up and you're like, okay, she looks like a different person now. <laughs> There's Heather Trippin. One of my friends came with, she said it perfectly one time. She came to an event and she said, well, Heather, let's just say we know never to be surprised. I love that. I love that. Um, so, uh... What it does is it gives me hope. It gives me hope when when I feel like there's always a solution. I just need to get with it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's there. I just need to find it. And, and if I'm stuck in limitation, then I don't find it. So when I step into my imagination and I step into my ability to create, then my creativity guides me. And I always find the solution. That's how it works. And it really does work. Like I said, um, I've worked this process with hundreds of people. Um, I have, you no, know, I don't know if I, I might have testimonials up on my website. I think that part is disabled, but if you guys want some, I can give you some. Um, and I can put, if they're not up there, I'll get them up there. But, um, yeah, so if you have questions, um, you can email me at IamTheChiefness at gmail.com. I am the chief at gmail.com or just write something in the comments or write an emoji and I will get with you. But more information will come out. That's going to start in May. Okay. But, um, if any of you have questions, you guys have stayed with me for a, we've been on here for like an hour and like 10 minutes now. Um, if anybody has questions and I'll scroll through here and see if anybody asked anything, but, um, if y'all have a question, I would love to hear it. Woo. Card fill out. Where'd it go? I love that when that happens. When I'm connected to my joyful presence, I attract support from the universe. Isn't that what I just said? I think it is. That's the truth. This is the key to staying in the solution. And, and I present this right now because there is an aspect of, let me, there's a version of life being presented if you choose to watch the media and you choose to ascribe to this way of understanding. I'm not saying one is right or one is wrong. I'm saying that there are different ways to view things, different ways to um, apply our energy, and different flows that we will find ourselves in as we do such. So I find it beneficial to choose the flow I want to be in as opposed to reacting to what I see because I won't be me. Best me I can be. <laughs> Dr. Zeus ain't got nothing on me. You can't rhyme with the same rhyme twice, though. That doesn't count. So, um... I, like I said, I, I choose to go through situations in my power, deciding who I want to be and how I want to behave, and this allows me to do it. So um, stay tuned for more information. It's called the Create the Character Workshop, and if you are ready to create your character with me, <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> I'll create a new one with you too, by the way. But just post something in the comments, put an emoji or whatever, and I will hit you all up. Um, let me go. Hello, beautiful Susan. I love you. Um, let me go. Gary, Jer is it Gary or Jerry? I thank you for, um, for joining me and your beautiful comments. Christopher, enjoy work. Lexi, that is beautiful. Now, I want to know, is the air quality, like, you can see that? Or is that what you're hearing reported? Or does it, when you, like, go outside, can you see the difference in the air? I want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Amen on the 15 years sobriety, my brother. Do, do, do. I'm going to check out what you sent, Tom. And Rick, what's the bard? Oh, are you going to make me Google? I love it. I love when I have to Google. Ooh, when I don't know something, I get to learn. I'm so happy to see all of you beautiful people. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I know what else I need to tell you guys. Um, I have cooking workshops starting. I forgot to tell you that. We are cooking starting... What day is it? Ah! Well, not like that. Hold on just a second. I'm getting all kinds of crazy. Um, we are cooking... Today's the 19th. Uh, we're starting cooking workshops. 
Why is this not staying now? Oh, man. There. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, we're starting cooking workshops. I don't know what I did with the um, comments. My comments are gone now, so I can't answer any questions. Hopefully, they'll pop back up. Let me see if I push this. Nope. That's going to let me write on something. No. 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 I don't want that. It's not what I wanted. I didn't know you could do that while you were alive. All right, well, now I'm just, like, talking out the side of my neck. Anyway, Create the Character Workshop start in May. Information will be coming. Chiefess Cooking Workshops. We're cooking from scratch. I'm teaching you how to make healthy soul food. Home-cooked healing so you can look beautiful and maintain your energy and your immune health. That's what it's all about. Um... Those start uh, the end of April, yes. So you guys can sign up for those too and information will be out and on my website. Website's under construction, bear with me. I'm trying to be lots of places at once. Not really, but um, anyway, that's all I have. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you guys want to go to my website for blog information or recipes, you can visit the, my website at www holistic happy health holistic starts with a w.com i'll put that link in there and then please go to youtube and subscribe to my youtube channel because i will be going live from youtube um with all sorts of good stuff in the future so please go there and subscribe please share this video please comment if you would like to create your character and um become more of the human that you want to be and uh, and do it with me. I would love, love, love to uh, be a part of your journey. So thanks so much for joining me. I love you. I love you. I love you.